This is a bad idea. Shh. Young girl makes crazy video on YouTube. What happens next, you won't believe your eyes. There are lots of industries dominated by only one or two suppliers. Think of your local cable company that might be a monopoly, or DC and Marvel, a comic book duopoly. Ooh, let's watch Guardians of the Galaxy instead of doing this. But photography is a relatively healthy market, with a handful of companies offering competitive products that keep innovation relatively high and profits relatively trim. Or even Legends of the Guardians, the Owls of Gohul. Remember that bird movie? Did you know the only way to get tickets to that movie was to show up in the theater drunk and covered in dumpster meat? What's going on? New camera bodies are the most obvious competitive statement a camera company can make. Camera bodies set up the tempo of any visual song you can play, but lenses are like the chorus in a song. They can change a little Please. every- Please don't sing. Right now, the photography industry is in a big transition, the biggest since the transition from film to digital. We're all slowly leaving behind the optical viewfinder and unifying around mirrorless. But while this is happening and lots of new tech is getting stuffed into these cameras, lenses are also getting refined. Lenses age well, and unlike a camera body, the product cycle for a quality pro lens can easily reach 10 years. Ha, <laughs> you'll be old by then. Same age, shut up. The future of lens technology is exciting, and I have a new set of lenses here that illustrate some of the best features in lens design. Okay, fine, let's talk about lens tech, but can we do it without a cliche travel montage? Four years ago, I decided to care about how I feel when I photograph. No one single image defines our wedding and commercial business, so I wanted a camera system that had a modern, compact build that could be shouldered during long shoots. On a trip hiking along the Hawaiian coast, I was reminded that the majority of the time I'm traveling with gear in between photographs. And that experience, the in-between, matters if I hope to stay happy as a career photographer. This idea that the in-between moments of photography matters is especially true for wedding and corporate event photography, where the long hours can drain your creativity and potentially impact your customer service. Strap in, people. Here comes the dumpster meat. One of the reasons why lightweight and compact lenses are the best in futuristic designing has to do with the way platforms like 500 Pixels and Instagram, where pro photographers share with each other constantly, accelerates innovations in photographic techniques. And this acceleration means that modern photographers need a lot of continual practice to stay sharp. And compact lightweight equipment makes it a little easier to practice in this more competitive landscape. Before we go any further, let me say here that weather sealing is an important feature that allows photographers to practice or perform in conditions that help photographers learn tough lessons. Photographing in harsh weather is a great exercise in focus and patience. If you can photograph in harsh conditions, you can offer a smile and go the extra mile for your clients. So when pros first started to shoot digital and they didn't have to pay a small fee for every photograph of 35 millimeter film, they were able to more comfortably practice and play behind the camera. And this low barrier to experimentation drove the profession to the high standards it has today. The same analogy is true but more subtle for the shrinking in size of lenses and camera bodies. Where the hell is that emoji? So the future of lens technology is increasingly compact design that lowers the barriers to practice. But it's also more functionality, like custom function buttons on the lenses. Manufacturers are adding value to their new autofocus lenses by creating fast access to feature settings. Olympus was one of the first to offer custom function buttons on their Pro Series lenses, but to make it valuable it needs to be added across a Pro Lens lineup so it's a reliable shooting workflow. Another development in the future of lens design is the trend away from generic sharpness and towards unique bokeh characteristics. When all lenses produce sufficiently sharp images, sharpness no longer becomes interesting to see in an image. A lens with special visual characteristics becomes really fascinating, as long as it's also sufficiently sharp. This explains the recent success of the manual focus Petzval lens and Sony's new 100mm STM lens. The trade-off using the Sony lens is that it has beautiful bokeh, but claims to be f2.8 when it actually has a light transmission or t-stop of f5.6. So your exposure would need to change radically if you switched between lenses on assignment. And you'd have a difficult time exposure matching in multi-cam video production. And as more photographers cross over to video work, t-stops and light transmission are going to be just as important as f-stops. But in the new set of Olympus f1.2 prime lenses, they tried to design these with very soft bokeh at the largest apertures, but also maintain a higher integrity of the light transmission. They call this feathered bokeh. 
Olympus is setting themselves up to add significant value for filmmakers. Looking at their new 17mm, the 25mm released a year ago, and the 45mm, we see that their newest Prime f1.2 aperture lenses all have virtually identical housing. That means they have designed an average for their lens casing and are applying it to multiple focal lengths. This has a few exciting consequences. First of all, it means that a bag filled with these lenses can be reasonably compact and now balanced in the bag. As a wedding photographer, I'll wear the same bag for almost 10 hours with only a few breaks, and imbalances become noticeable after about 5 hours of work. Anyone who treks or loves to explore will appreciate the idea of matching lens housing design. Matching housing also means that filmmakers don't have to rebalance a gimbal or change the tension on a fluid head when they switch lenses. When a manufacturer makes two radically different lenses, none of us benefit from economies of scale. So look at these two lenses and think about the different engineering techniques required to finish these lenses. There's not enough similarities between these two to make production efficient. Is that why you only eat McDonald's fast food? Because you like the toilet clogging streamlined supply chain of Big Macs? No, if you want to make a precise thing like a lens, not a sandwich, then making them nearly identical makes construction more efficient and more accurate and in the short run more profitable for the company, and in the long run less expensive for the consumer. Cinema no. lenses have been designed with matching housing for years. This isn't new. What's new is Olympus is making the tiniest version of this ambitious design. For most of the 1990s and early 2000s, when a manufacturer sold a large aperture lens, it needed to be stopped down significantly before it sharpened up to acceptable levels. Eight years ago, I'd have to stop down my Canon 85mm f1.2 to f2.5 to get sharp images. Recently I got my hands on a pre-release copy of the Olympus 17mm and wanted to see if it's sharp enough at f1.2 for images I'd be proud to deliver to a client. So at first to practice I set up a little portrait scene and used magnetic light modifiers made by Magmod. And by the way, nothing has changed the speed of light modification for working pros like Magmod. I know it's over. Check out my phone shoulder. I was happy with the results. So it's been part of my working kit for my recent commercial clients. All right, so how do you say goodbye on YouTube? <laughs> I know how to do it. Don't forget to click thumbs down and unsubscribe. The light went off.